invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. When Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. <laughs> Since I'm in America, I'm becoming more and more like a real American. But Pasquale, my countryman, he's tell me nobody is a real 100% of 14-carat American unless he's a take out a life insurance policy. <laughs> but I'm going to understand about the life insurance. What the for a man wants a life insurance when he's going to get the paid until he's a die? <laughs> I was a think is it better to have a die in insurance so you get a pay the when you like? <laughs> but then now I'm here more than a year, and I'm realizing how foolish I was. Then. Life in insurance is a very important. When a man dies, an insurance company is to give his wife enough for money so she can afford the new husband. <laughs> here in America, they got all the kinds of insurance for people. There is a life in insurance, a hospital in insurance. Accident insurance to fire insurance. Mamma mia. No matter what the trouble happens to the American, he must get the rich. <laughs> Maybe Pasquale is right. I should have a life insurance policy. Well, I'm going to go to my night school class now and ask my teacher, Miss Spalding, what she's a thinker. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean. Quiet, class. Quiet. All right. Let's come to attention. Now I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco. Here. Mr. Harwick. Here. Mr. Olson. Here. Mr. Schultz. Here. Miss Spalding. Here. <laughs> the idea of that. I figure as long as you are calling the roll, let's go whole hog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow boobers. <laughs> now, class, let's get on with our history lesson. We'll begin with famous rivers. Now, who can tell me the discoverer of the Hudson? Anybody? Oh, I know Miss Balding. I know Miss Balding. I know Miss Balding. I know Miss Balding. <laughs> you know what? We all know Miss Balding, but we don't make such a fuss about it. <laughs> what a show off. Disregard him, Mr. Olson. Please give us the answer. That's a pleasure, Miss Balding. Henry Hudson discovered the Hudson River. Good. Now, will somebody tell me when the Hudson was discovered? Mr. Basco? 1949. <laughs> oh, no. Where did you get that idea? I'm mean, here. Everybody talk about a 1949 a Hudson. <laughs> Miss Baldy, the correct answer is... Henry Hudson discovered the Hudson River in 1619. That's excellent, Mr. Olson. Quick as a flash. Yeah, he's a real jerk in the box. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Now, Mr. Basco, I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself. A very simple question. Who discovered America? Oh, Columbus. What year? 1492. How many ships? Three. What were their names? Remember, she's giving him the third degree for something Columbus did. <laughs> into you today? I don't know. It must be the jeekle coming out of my hide. <laughs> Mr. Basco, why couldn't you answer that simple question? Did Mr. Schultz confuse you? Oh, no, Mr. Boiling. I, I was thinking about something else. Pasquale tells me every good American has got a life insurance policy. Is it that the truth? True. True is the day you're born. 
Luigi a fellow's got to have insurance to protect his family. That's right, Mr. Basco. Life insurance is very important. Yo, I carry $10,000 insurance, Luigi. My wife collects all that money if something happens to me and I go. Well, what are you waiting for already? Go! <laughs> I'm a no got the family here in America. I'm a just a got to my mom in Italy. Well, Luigi, you don't need such a big policy. Take out for a thousand, two thousand maybe. Yes, and you make your mother the beneficiary. That means that she collects the money. Yeah. Well, uh, this uh, policy, is it going to cost me a lot of money? No, 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 Luigi. I just took mine out. Your policy, they, they shouldn't cost more than thirty or forty dollars. Oh, well, thank you, Classy, for this information. I think I'm going to let the Pasquale help me take out a policy. That's right, Luigi. Yeah, and do it now. Like we say when we are making hamburgers. <laughs> Don't put off for tomorrow what you can shop in today. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pasquale. Luigi, I want you should meet Mr. Burton, my insurance man. Oh. He's the old friend of the family. Uh -huh. Mr. Burton, this is the fellow I was telling you about, Luigi Basco. Ah, oh, it's a great pleasure to meet you, Mr. Basco. I handle all of Mr. Pasquale's insurance. Health, life, accident, auto, fire, burglary. Pasquale, what the fuck you want to show burglars? <laughs> <laughs> you see, Mr. Burton is like I tell you. He's an on that thing about insurance. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm here for, to clear up any questions you may have. Now, Mr. Basco, I want you to know that my life insurance company insures only the highest types of risks, what we call Class A. Now, from what Mr. Pasquale has told me about you, I I think we can put you in that category. You see, Luigi, I'm a big shot with these people. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pasquale. And thank you, Mr. Burton. Right, all right. Have a cigar. No, thanks. I'm a no smoker. Take, Luigi. Take. While you're still alive, take everything. <laughs> well, uh, all right. Live? Thank you. By the way, uh, I got this lighter as a gift from my company. Sold $100,000 worth of life insurance, 1943. Well, that's a very... <laughs> <laughs> nice, Luigi, don't die yet. The wait until you sigh. <laughs> yes, those 15 cents imported Havanas are pretty strong. Now, Mr. Basco, if you don't mind, I'd like to get a little idea of what you were thinking about in the line of insurance. Well, my friends are advising me I should take out a $1,000 policy. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Burton? You're not smoking a cigar. Luigi, you insulted him, Mr. Burton. He's a high-class insurance man. You talking with a cheaper thousand a dollar policy? Maybe you better explain it to him, Mr. Burton. <laughs> yeah, glad to. <laughs> now, Mr. Basco, there's nothing really complicated about it. Take the cheapest kind, for instance, term life insurance. You pay for a certain number of years. The premium is very small, but of course, if you're alive at the end of that time, you get nothing back from the company. <laughs> You mean that the company's angry with me because I'm still living? <laughs> no, the company likes you. The company wants you to live long. The longer, the better. Oh, thank you, Mr. Burton. Thank you, Mr. Vasco. Thank you, Mr. Burton. And a good health to you, too, Mr. Burton. Thank you, Mr. Vasco. <laughs> and a thank you, Mr. Burton. And you, too, Pasquale. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you, Pasquale. <laughs> this is cigar. That's <laughs> making me feel pretty good. A little dizzy. <laughs> hey, hey, Pasquale, how's about us some beer? That's a nice slow brew to Acme. Thank you, Mr. Basco. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Burton. Well, don't thank me. Thank you, Pasquale. That's uh, his beer. You're welcome, Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luigi, stop a call for me like that. You're making Mr. Burton a nervous. Hey, that's oh. quite all right. Now, term insurance, Mr. Basco, has its advantages, but it is a rather limited kind of policy. Rather more in line with your needs would be the ordinary life or straight life plan, which gives the advantages of full protection without the expensive burden of high premiums associated with a limited payment or endowment type of insurance program. <laughs> you understand that? Huh? 
<laughs> you gotta talk slow to him, Mr. Bateman. He's a foreigner born alien. He doesn't know how to stay. <laughs> I'm gonna explain to him. You see, Luigi, uh, there's uh, four kinds of insurance, uh, but they all got a one thing in a common. You got to die at the end. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> not exactly, Mr. Prosper. <laughs> what do you mean, not exactly? You got a new type policy that pay a man when he's a half a dead? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Mr. Bosco. However, the sincerity behind your questions makes me wonder how a man of your caliber can be satisfied with a mere $1,000 policy. Well, uh, $2,000? $2,000? A big business a man like you has got to have a five or 10000 What do you think, Mr. Bateman? Hey, let me light your cigar again, Mr. Bosco. Now, the insurance I have in mind for you is one which combines the best elements of saving, security, and... <laughs> Luigi, I'm certainly proud of you. You're a real big business man. <laughs> Thank you, Pasquale. Hey, that's the Mr. Burton. He's a very nice man. Imagine he's giving me two cigars for nothing. Well, it's not every day you meet a man like you to take out a $50,000 policy. <laughs> I'm going to you to thank Pasquale. You give him such a good recommendation. That's all right, Luigi. Uh, by the way, uh, you know how much of the premium is it going to cost to you on this policy? Well, I didn't ask. But all you need to tell me in the class, it's about $30, $40 a year. $30, $40 a year. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, little pumpkin ahead. <laughs> I got a news for you. News? Premium on your policy is close to $2,000 a year. $2,000? I'm not going to pay this money. It's impossible. You've got to pay. You sign a contract with insurance companies like a marriage contract. What a Pasquale. What they can do to me if I'm not pay? Companies sue you for non-support. <laughs> <laughs> and worse than that... When you sign of the papers was a carbon in the back, is a mean of two copies. So what if it was a two copies? Luigi, you guilty of a double indemnity. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia. Pasquale, why you letting me take out of such a big policy? Luigi, once the milk is a spelt, there's no trying to push it back of the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi. What would you say if I was to tell you the name of a place that would give you all of the money to pay off your insurance premium? Pasquale, what's the name of this place? The Rosa Finance Company. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do. I'm not going to marry a finance company. I'm asking you to marry my daughter, Rosa. She's a bigger than a finance company. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you stupid greenhorn boob. I didn't want to tell you this, uh, but do you know what you started when you signed your mama's name as a beneficiary? What? Well, when she's going to pay that money, is it sent to her across the ocean, eh? Uh -huh. That's a violation of the Atlantic Charter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pasquale, wait. How am I going to tell him to stop the insurance? Is it too late? Don't you know what it's mean when an immigrant is to stop his insurance? They export you. Why? Because the Congress has spent all these years making a foreign policy and you cancel it. Pasquale, all right. All right. Then what's to happen? Right away, Washington is a call its ambassador in Italy. He's a pack up his little briefer case. Italy is a beg him to stay. He's a say no. That's the end of the Marshall plan. <laughs> Pasquale, all of this is because I'm going to take out an insurance policy? That's all right, you traitor. <laughs> Pasquale, what's going to happen to me? Everything. Besides that, when you get your citizenship papers, FBI is going to stamp on the bottom, Traitor, can't get a library card. Life with Luigi continues in just a moment, but first... Every girl should be married, so say all June brides. 
And Every Girl Should Be Married is the name of the comedy on Lux Radio Theater tomorrow night. It's a full-hour version of the hit motion picture comedy, and of course, Cary Grant and Betsy Drake, the original stars, will be heard in the leading role. That's tomorrow on the Lux Radio Theater. Lux Radio Theater is heard on most of the same CBS stations. And now for the second act of Luigi Vasco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. So, Mamma Mia, just because I'm going to try to be a good American and to take out a life insurance policy, I'm in a terrible trouble. Funny thing is, Mamma Mia, your son of Luigi has got a $50,000 policy. Yep. Now, if anything is happening to me, you get all of this money, and I'm going to have to borrow $50 to get a buried. <laughs> Another funny thing about having a $50,000 insurance is everybody is treating me with a more respect. Today I'm crossing the street, and the cars, they stop before me. Even if they know I'm worth the more money. <laughs> so here I am, sitting in my store, and trying to figure out what I should do, when a suddenly a door is open up. Luigi, my fellow poob. <laughs> but how did you make it out with insurance? <laughs> so I'm just to take out a policy for $50,000. $50,000? Him, who's going to pay it? Is Rita Hayworth going to introduce you to the Ali Khan disco? <laughs> Schultz, uh, Schultz, please, is not time to joke. Pasquale is not tell me how much insurance is it going to cost. He's a tell insurance a man I'm a bigger man. An insurance a man is he give me a cigar, so I'm going to sit there and I'm end up with a bigger policy. Who oh, that scheming Pasquale? Like always, he's got you all for shimmer. <laughs> Luigi, why, why, why do you listen to everything Pasquale tells you? I'm not listening. I'm well, you just... always believe in that big faker. You believed him once when he told you lifesavers had holes in the middle so the tongue could have a place to rest between legs. <laughs> And you believed him when he told you he could get you a jar of Milan's 1890 French dressing for 1885. <laughs> My Luigi, you better stop taking short haircuts. I think the barber is snipping off your brain. <laughs> I, I, I wish I knew what kind of a contract you signed so I could maybe help you out of it. I should say I'm feeling terrible. Now I'm going to go to the insurance doctor for the examination. The doctor! Then... The doctor! Uh, Ray Luigi into my head, an idea just pooped. What is your... Luigi, Luigi, no matter, no matter what kind of policy you sign for, if you fail the doctor's examination, then they don't want you. What a shoot. You mean I should tell the doctor I'm a sick? Sure, sure. And I got a wonderful way to convince the doctor. How? When you go into his office, walk in lying down. <laughs> but it so what I can say to the doctor to make him think I'm a sick. You don't know what to say. Stop uh -huh. any fella on the street and ask him what he told his draft board. <laughs> Come on, on the way down, I'm going to coach. Oh, thanks, Mr. Schultz. Oh, he's always a trouble. Oh, so what, Luigi? Be like me. Smile. <laughs> Everybody's got trouble. You know what they say, don't you? Everything in life meets with disaster. Today's blue jay is tomorrow's corn plaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my rheumatism is killing me. Luigi, don't be nervous. Whatever the doctor asks you for diseases, you got it. <laughs> oh, Schultz, I'm, I'm never tell a lie. Yeah, this time you gotta tell a lie. Besides, you ain't lying. You're just remembering what I told you. 
right, the Schultz. I'll try. Yeah, and if you act a little crazy, that don't hurt either. <laughs> but me, please, let me hear you cough. <laughs> now, Luigi, you are coughing too healthily. Put a little hack into it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Basco. Doctor will see you now. Yeah, how do you do, Mr. Basco? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Doctor. Yeah, sounds like a nasty cough. Did you always cough like that? No, only when I'm a breathing. <laughs> well, up in this weather, it's quite common. Yeah, I woke up this morning with a Lulu myself. Hey, listen to this. Thing. Then again, coughing and sneezing may be due to an allergy like hay fever. That's what I'm a got. You have hay fever? Sure. Every time I'm a eat the hay, I'm a get a fever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Vasco, you're a job. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I'll fill out this insurance form while I examine you. The doctors are no use to examine. Believe well, me, I'm a sick man. <laughs> Now, let Doctor find out for himself. You stick out your tongue. After you? <laughs> of course. Oh, no, I'm going to get too much respect for the doctor. Oh, 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 come now. Let's have your tongue. How am I going to take it off? <laughs> uh, just open your mouth. That's right. Doctor, what are you looking for that's so bad? Well, we look to see if your tongue has a coat. Oh, Doctor, my tongue has always got a coat, but I'm going to take it off for the summer. <laughs> yeah. Well, the tongue looks fine. It does? Yes. Now let's listen to the old ticker. I'm sorry, Doctor, you can't. Why not? I'm a left of my watch at home. <laughs> yeah, just pull up your shirt and I'll apply the stethoscope. What <laughs> is the tickler? <laughs> Ah, perfect, perfect. Why, I'd insure that heart for a million dollars. Now, how are your lungs and liver? I'm going to eat that, Doctor. I'm going to rather have a lamb chop. <laughs> oh, you big executives are great kidders. How's your blood pressure? Very high, Doctor, very high. Really? Yesterday I was in a gas station, and I had a 50 pounds in my right arm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ever have neuralgia? Oh, no, Doctor. Well, that's good. I'm a still a suffer from a the old algae. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how about varicose veins? Oh, yes, sir, Doctor. My veins, they are very close. <laughs> hey, look, are you fooling or do you mean it? I'm a trying to tell you, Doctor. I'm a very sick man. Mm. Well, let me test your hearing. Stand back there and turn around. Now, uh, do you hear this sound? Is that the sound? Yeah. I'm going to hear it. <laughs> and how about this one? <laughs> no, no, I hear a thing. Then how about this? <laughs> Doctor, I'm going to hear it. Doctor, I'm going to hear it. Well, you'll have to shout louder. That whistle almost blew my brains out. <laughs> the doctor, I'm going to tell you, there's no use to take a of me. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Uh, have you ever had any surgery? What, are you? Surgery. <laughs> Operation. Ever had your appendix out? Oh, yes. When I was a little boy, I'm having my appendix out, and my tonsils out, and my adenoids out, and my gallbladder out. <laughs> All that? That's right, the doctor. I was the emptiest kid on the block. <laughs> uh, Mr. Basco, did you ever hear of a hypochondriac? I'm having that taken out too, doctor. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I happen to think you're one of the healthiest specimens I've seen in a long time. But it may be that you're suffering from hallucination. That's right, the doctor. Everything in me is a loose. <laughs> Now, look, let me do the talking. Lie down. But a doctor... Hey, lie down and stick out your arm. I just want to take a specimen of your blood. 
Oh. Then I'll tie this around your arm. Oh. <laughs> Where you? Hey, look, kind of you. A hair must off, a clothes are scattered, a face is a pale, eyes are bloodshot. Well, you look bad enough to be on the television. Mr. <laughs> Pasquale, don't make a fun. I was just a examiner by an insurance doctor. First, he's a bang on my knees with a hammer. Then he's a stick of pennies in me. Is a take out of some blood to put a drops in my eyes. Is a shoot the water into my ears. When is a get through it to me, then I'm a really need a doctor. Luigi, all of the doctors are there the same way. Not to this uh, Dr. Pasquale. He's a telling me he used to give physicals into the army. <laughs> That's terrible. What's the part of all of Pasquale? The doctor is a pronouncing me living. I'm a past the policy now. I'm going to have to pay for it. Luigi, you're trapped. There's a no doubts about it. Only way out of for you is to make a successful marriage. Pasquale. Don't talk. I accept your proposal. <laughs> Rosa. Rosa. <laughs> Rosa. <laughs> Come here, my little pussy willow. <laughs> Say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. <laughs> oh, you're going to make a wonderful couple together. You're going to be happy like a two little lovebirds. Rosa, what do you say to your little lovebirds? <laughs> Luigi, you want to sit with me on the fence? <laughs> so, Luigi, your insurance and troubles is all over. I've been so happy, I... Uh, Mr. Pasquale. Well, uh, my insurance man, uh, Mr. Bates. Mr. Pasquale, I've got something to tell you. And I've got something to tell you. I'm going to have the pleasure of paying this to young fellas a premium. What? Yes, he's a coming into my family, marrying my daughter. He's going to be my son-in-law. Stop, stop. I've heard enough. Mr. Pasquale, I'm an old friend of the family. Don't let this man marry your daughter. What? I looked him up, and he's an imposter. Mr. Basco's got you believing he's a successful businessman like you told me, but he's broke. He's about. Now, wait. I won't stay here one minute with him. I'm an old friend of the family, so I cancel the policy. But... Cost you nothing. Bye, Mr. Pasquale. What's to happen? <laughs> Martin! Luigi, where are you going? Back into my store, Pasquale. I'm going to lie down after the examination. But Luigi, what about Rosa? I was going to pay you premium. Maybe you're going to get married? No, Papa. I don't want to be your son. Just to think of me as an old friend of the family. <laughs> Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash has starred as Luigi Vasco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, and Jody Gilbert as Rosa. Music is under the direction of Lynn Murray. Starting next Sunday, July 3rd, Life with Luigi will be heard earlier on Sunday evenings for the summer. Luigi and his friends will move into the program spot where you now hear Lum and Abner on most of these same CBS stations. To make sure that you don't miss the next adventure in Life with Luigi, check your newspaper radio listings and listen to your local station announcements. Remember, starting next week, Life with Luigi is to be heard earlier. Bob Stevenson speaking. Stay tuned now for It Pays to be Ignorant, where life is lived with a hilariously low IQ. It follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System.